I think, you know, being a Gettysburgian, obviously, you know, you have to do, you're doing great work. Um, you're part of this community, but in my, in my mind, it's like, it's, it's kind of being a, uh, becoming a part of something much bigger than just yourself. Hi, and welcome to Conversations Beneath the Cupola, a Gettysburg College podcast. I'm Bob Giuliano, president of the college and your host. As we record this, one of the more unusual semesters in this college's long history has come to a close, with final exams concluding just a few days ago. The end of any academic year offers a time for both reflection and celebration, and today's podcast is designed to do both. Joining me today are three remarkable members of the class of 2020, Darby Nesbitt, Jason Sinsheimer, and Jasmine Reneso Ortiz. They will offer thoughts on their time at Gettysburg College, sharing the lessons they learned, the people and the moments that shaped them, their postgraduate plans, and of course, how they have made sense of the last few months. Well, folks, welcome to this conversation and thank you for joining in. But most importantly, congratulations as we're recording this. Uh, you have all completed your senior year. Um, exams are done, uh, they're in, and we're looking forward to a senior celebration in the coming days. Let's start, if we can, by um, just acknowledging that this was not uh, the end of a year that any of you could have predicted. And my guess is it wouldn't have been your choice about the way to have ended the academic year, much less your senior year. What lessons do you draw from this? That is, what do you feel like um, you found as challenges? What did you think you found as opportunities to learn something more about yourself, perhaps, um, so what do you guys make of the last couple of months in particular as they relate to your activities as students? So I think I've learned the value of flexibility for sure. Um, I'm a double major and both of my capstones are this semester. So both of my capstones were disrupted. So learning how to make those work with these circumstances was definitely a uh, took up, the, I think, the most of my last several weeks on campus or not on campus here at home. Um, so I had to change how I did my research or change how I completed my art projects. So it really pushed me to grow just how can I look at research? How can I look at my projects and make them adapt to whatever situation I'm in, which is, I'm sure, a great skill moving forward. And Darby, do you see that as sort of a lasting, lasting change in the way that you approach work or is it too early to tell? Um, it's probably a bit too early to tell, but I already know that my graduate school classes that I'm starting this summer will be online as well. So I'm sure that will be lessons that I continue to learn and that will help me grow even further, but I have a good foundation for it now. Jason or Jasmine, how do you um, reflect on the last couple of months? Yeah, so for me, uh, I felt that establishing a routine was very important. Um, you know, because in, in college, we're all used to getting up, you know, having having a cup of coffee, going to your classes, then going to the library, you know, doing all your work. So uh, being at home, it's, it's hard to, of course, establish a similar routine uh, and getting all your work done and everything. So for me, that was important. Um, I also took my uh, senior uh, history major seminar uh, this semester, and we had to write a, a pretty lengthy research paper. So for me, waking up early, establishing a routine and uh, working every day on that was important. And, and in terms of the online classes and Zoom, um, I felt that the professors were very flexible and flexibility was important, like Darby uh, said. Um, and just being very communicative with your professors um, and being willing to seek out help when you need it is important. Um, we're lucky that we have a lot of great professors at our school that are flexible and willing to help students. So that seeking help when you need it is, is important. So, so Jasmine, how about you? What have you as you reflect over these last couple of months, particularly relative to the, the rest of your time at the college, what do you make of it all? Um, so I faced a lot of challenges um, because unlike Jason, I, I'm pre I've always been very structured and disciplined. So for me, um, being on campus, like I do believe that it really helps with maintaining that sort of like routine, but I've always been like a morning person. Like I've always, I've always um, planned, I mean, it sounds a little bit weird, but I've always, like, I always plan out my day. So I planned the day the night before. And so like, for me, what was really difficult is just like, um, it was the fact that I would plan something out, but my family would not be, be mindful of the plan. So I was, I would um, have to constantly just kind of like change my plan or rearrange things. So I had to be um, flexible. The other component to that is that 
my family were like first generation. So um, interesting enough, sometimes they don't understand how different the education in America is, is to like the education in the Dominican Republic, which is where we're from. And so there'll be days that they'll just, you know, complain and say, oh, you never do anything around the house. And I would explain like, hey, like, you know, this is this is pending. I have to focus on this. And so like, it was just constantly reminding them like, Hey, I'm not on a vacation. I'm still in school. I have to get things done. So like my mindset was there, like I was still motivated, but I, I had to, I was just constantly struggling, struggling, trying to, you know, finish the work while making sure that I was also, you know, pleasing my family, like making sure I was helping them out as well. Jasmine, that is a, uh, an answer that I have heard from many students who said that, uh, it wasn't just the structure that Jason and I were talking about, but it was just the changed set of expectations that when you're here, uh, some people have campus jobs, of course, and they're attending to a lot of a lot of competing, competing demands on their time. But there's sort of a commonality of experience that is brought about by virtue of being on campus. But when you disperse from campus, everyone's life circumstances are wildly different. And it is the variables of their home environment that end up having a profound impact on their ability to engage with the academic material as fully as they would like to. Um, so I completely and I completely understand that. Let's change gears if we can. Um, this place is, and, and in part, we've got a little bit at this. This place has been very much, at least in my experience, about a special nature of community, sort of a sense of what brings us together, helping to define the place. Um, do you guys agree with that? Am I reading the campus right that this has a special sense of community? If so, how have you found that in the absence of being on campus? And how would you define that special sense of community? Again, if you think that's right. When you, okay, so when I was on campus, I would constantly hear people say things like, oh, you know, there's a sense of um, com uh, community at Gettysburg. And I would oddly not feel it. Like I would feel like, you know, I was kind of on my own because, you know, in college, like, it's not like high school. We're in high school, you know, professors hold your hands in college is very, very different. And so like, I would often hear like, oh, sense of community, but I just, I wouldn't really feel it, you know, like I wouldn't really think about it. But um, yesterday I was actually texting one of my mentors because I was really, really sad. And I realized like, wow, like now I feel it, right? Like now that I'm away from the community, um, I, I really feel it. And I, and uh, the reason why I texted the mentors, because um, I was actually working on some things for grad school. And then I realized like, okay, I can no longer go to this person or that person. And then it kind of hit me how, you know, I get Eastburg, I had my support group. Like I had people that I could go to for advice or I could go to, to just, I don't know, talk about something that I found, you know, interesting during that day or during a reading or something. And then I realized like, I don't have that. I mean, it's there at Gettysburg and I could still reach out, but I realized like, wow, like that's probably what people mean by sense of community, you know? And so when I reached out to my mentor, I realized like, okay, that's another component, right? The sense of, yes, like it's there physically at Gettysburg, but it's also, it doesn't stop being uh, you know, our community once you leave Gettysburg. And then I realized like, okay, wow, like, you know, I do have a community and I am a part of it. So, yeah. And I think you will find, again, you guys have been around this campus longer than I have. You guys are four-year veterans. I'm a one-year uh, veteran. Um, I want to just underscore the point, Jasmine. I think it has an enduring aspect to it. It's not just for the people who are here while they're students. I think that connection remains as strong as you want it to, right? Uh, and part of it is stay in touch with your mentors, stay in touch with your friends. Jason, what defines, from your perspective, what defines being a Gettysburgian? What does it mean to be part of this community? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. You know, obviously, uh, Gettysburg has a slogan, or we like to say, like, you know, do we do great work. Uh, but, you know, I I feel like being a Gettysburgian is, is you know, it's, it encompasses much more than that in the sense that, you know, like Jasmine was saying and how you were saying how it's, we, we do indeed foster a sense of a tightly knit community. And that's something that's distinctive, I feel, about Gettysburg. And, you know, being a Gettysburgian, you're you're privileged in, in being a part of that. And uh, I think, you know, being a Gettysburgian, obviously, you know, you have to do, you're doing great work. Um, you're a part of this community. But in my, in my mind, it's like, it's, it's kind of being, a, uh, becoming a part of something much bigger than just yourself. I mean, that's obviously... Uh, something that a community does for you, but what I mean by that is af actively pursuing something to to join a, uh, a group or join something that's 
that you can't just do individually, you know, becoming a collaborator um, and just joining something that puts you out of your comfort zone and uh, embracing the environment around you is something that a Getty's Bridge does. I, I like that answer a lot in part because it's my sense of the place that every institution has its own DNA and that DNA is established at least in part by its history. And I think our history is a little bit about getting yourself out there, um, working together towards something that's bigger than yourself. I mean, there are not many institutions that sit in such an important moment in American life as this institution does. And I think it can't help but influence the way we think of who we are and where we're trying to go. So um, I see it in our students. Um, and your answer, I think, reflects that. Darby, what about you? What, what has it meant to you to be part of this community? Um, so everything that has been said already, but I also think there's a certain, um, I guess vivaciousness is probably the right word. There's an urgency, I think, a lot um, among many of the students to do more, make a bigger difference. Of course, we're not perfect. There are always things we can improve on, but I think there are so many people who work really hard to find ways that they can make differences and can improve the experiences of different groups of people. So that sense of responsibility and um, really does strong desire to make a difference has been something that's really punctuated my experience as a Gettysburgian and something that I'm proud to tell people when I say I went to Gettysburg College. A good education changes you. It changes you in ways that sometimes are obvious and sometimes are not obvious. As you all get ready to graduate on Sunday, uh, you do actually get your degrees on Sunday. The diplomas are a different things, but you get your degrees on Sunday. All three students are smiling, I should note. Um, how have you changed and has there been an event that you would give as an illustration as one of those moments that really caused you to see the world in a different way? Jason, I've called on each of the uh, your, your other colleagues to lead the conversation once. Would you be willing to take a stab at this? Yes. Are you referring to like a transformational class or just an experience? An experience or a class or a person, you know, Jasmine was talking about a mentor. Uh, how have you changed and how did that change come about? Yeah. So uh, when I first came to Gettysburg, um, I, I mean, I came from uh, New York City. Um, so the environment, of course, was very foreign to me. Um, and arriving at Gettysburg, the, the first semester was tough uh, in, the, in, this, in the aspect of like, you know, just trying to fit in and finding a group of people, um, you know, doing new things that I wouldn't otherwise do. So that was tough. But adjust so adjusting was a challenge, but I felt that I had to stick with it. Um, and, you know, I was very proud that I did that and that I, I took many interesting classes. Uh, you know, one of the strengths of Gettysburg, I feel, is the, the liberal arts education and that we're exposed to a wide breadth of, of academic discipline. Um, and you get to really discover what you like and what you don't like. And that, you know, helps you find what you're passionate about. And, and that's ultimately what, what made me choose my history major, because I'd always had a very uh, strong interest in, in writing uh, and exploring my research skills and su stuff like that. So I was, that, that's why the major was appealing to me, because I enjoyed writing and uh, I felt like I could improve taking the major and taking a lot of classes and that would allow me to prove that. Um, and so, yeah, I've taken many, many great classes in the history major, but uh, this semester, uh, I took an indiv individualized study research tutorial with Professor Bowman from the history department. And although this was, this wasn't a typical history class, um, I had I had taken history classes before with Professor Bowman. He's my advisor, um, and we both have a common interest in soccer uh, or football, uh, like how how we like to call it. Um, and I wanted to combine my interest in in football, sports management, sports history, and business. And uh, through developing a close relationship, working relationship with him, I was able to engage in this individualized study. And we met once a week um, throughout, throughout the whole semester. And even you know, through the pandemic, we would still meet once a week on Zoom. And uh, it was just a profound experience in that I was able to discover new things that I'm interested in that I otherwise wouldn't have. And the one-on-one -on -one attention that I received from Professor Bowman and his dedication to my learning was was great um, because I was really able to find, discover my own self and figure out that like sports management and sports business is something that I'm interested in. So that was a transformational experience. Jason, you just gave 
the best articulation of why a liberal arts college and why this college that I've that I've heard. I'm just going to take it all and just repeat it to parents when they ask <laughs> me, should my kid go to get a liberal arts education? Because it is about that close mentorship. Jasmine talked about that. It's about the breadth of the curriculum, the opportunity to sort of get to know yourself a little bit better. Darby, what about you as you think about your four years? Um, I'm assuming you leave a different person than you came in. Um, um, how has Gettysburg helped you along that path? Um, so, of course, there have been several classes that have been, had a really big impact on me, but I would say the after effect of my first year seminar has permanently changed kind of the, the path of my career um, going into college. I thought I was going to be an art therapist, um, but then my first year seminar professor in the spring semester, so after the class, uh, sent my name to the library as someone they thought would be a good candidate for the peer research mentor position in the library, and I ended up getting the job. Um, absolutely fell in love with library science, librarianship, and so now I'll be pursuing my master's of library and information science to become a librarian. And had I not taken that first year seminar, you know, four years ago and gotten to know that professor, she never would have seen something in me to forward my name. And so it was just kind of this amazing domino effect that completely altered the path of what I thought I wanted to do and showed me my true passion. So it wasn't necessarily something I learned in the class, but just that experience and opportunity forever changed my life. But again, I think the part of a whole collegiate experience is that you learn not just in the classroom, you exactly. learn in a thousand different forms about who you are and what inspires you, what excites you. But I congratulate you both for finding something that excites you, Darby, but also being open to it because it can be easy sometimes to say, I'm coming to college, I have my blinders on, this is what I'm going to do. But you opened yourself up to a broader horizon and found something that spoke to you. And that, I think, is incredibly encouraging. Uh, Jasmine, um, your thoughts about these four years and how you leave the college? Yes. So um, there are four classes that have made such a big impact on me. Um, so I took, uh, well, I just took uh, this semester a class um, it's a religion class or a religion course, and it focused on the competing narratives between um, Arabs and Jews or Israelis and Palestinians uh, more specifically. And I really enjoyed this class because um, I've always been like a big nerd. And so I remember in my when I was in high school, I would constantly get into debates with people that just never seemed to care or like knew much about the like the situation um and so i really enjoy this class because you know i well i mean you may not know but like i'm someone that i like to hear like just like two sides to every story and so you know we all have our biases and like i i recognize my own and so um for the in this class i found myself really or understanding not only the side that I'm biased towards, but just understanding the other side as well. And then I had um, these three other courses and one of them was in my major, political science. And I love this course because it was challenging. So I'm someone that I love to challenge myself because I like to be the best version of myself. And so um, I took this last semester, I think my fall semester, um, 2019, and what I loved about it was that it was so, it was for my capstone, but it was so complicated. Like it was just so complex. Um, it was, it was also on religion, <laughs> ironically, but what I liked about it is that the professor, um, I, I like that the professor allows me to be um, just who I am. So I'm someone that I don't just take things at face value. Like I like to, you know, put things together like a puzzle. And so what I liked about this class is that not only did I have to do readings um, on top of my capstone to really get a big picture, I like that, you know, they were writing assignments where I, I had to, you know, draw in the, like draw the picture. Like I had to do this on my own. Like it wasn't like simple in the way that it was like, it was like, okay, like this is a lecture. I'm putting the picture for you it was kind of like no these are this is the information and I need you to to do that and so I like that because I like ambiguity like I like to just write and then see where my like my words or where my mind takes me so I really really enjoy the class and of course I also I also find religion interesting so I'm like okay perfect you know and then the last two classes um and the other one was uh, more in focus on legal writing. And I loved it because um, I like to 
well, like I said, I like to improve myself, but in this class, I took it specifically because I wanted it to prepare me for law school, which I will be attending in the fall. And I just loved it so much because again, it prepared me, but also it was just like that constant belief. Like I really liked that all my professors at Gettysburg, they, they really like, I feel like they believe more in me than I do in myself. And so I really enjoyed it. And I, I've surprised myself too. I thought like, okay, I'll just get like a C in this class. Cause I heard it was hard, but I didn't get a C. So I was like, great. Like, <laughs> you know, so I, I was really thrilled. And, um, the last class that I took, um, I'm actually drawing a blank. So let's go with these three courses that I can think of at the moment. But talk about great life skills, looking at issues from multiple sides, drawing your own conclusions from facts. Um, again, I don't think a good education tries to give you the answer. The good, a good education tries to give you the tools to figure out the answer. And Darby, you're going to go into a profession in which that's exactly what you're going to do, right? You're going to give people the resources so they can learn for themselves um, what they think of a given situation. And part of your task, I think, in the library sciences world is helping people distinguish um, noise from signal, good, good information uh, from bad information. So let's go back for a moment to the unusual semester that we've just had. Um, has it changed your views, folks, about what you want to do um, uh, or the way you look at the world in sort of any significant ways? Or again, is it just too early to, to, to draw any, in any profound conclusion? Darby, what do you think? Has Have these last couple of months, not just on campus, but if we look at the world as a whole, have they influenced what you want out of your future? Um, I wouldn't say it's changed, but I would say it's reinforced. Um, part of the reason I love working in the library is because I get to interact with students and people from different backgrounds um, and missing that and not having that as part of my you know, regular routine is definitely something that's been a noticeable absence. So just, you know, realizing how important it is to, you know, be around others, help others. That's, yeah, that's definitely something that is just being reinforced. And, you know, we need human connection. And, you know, as much as we talk about community, it's something that we all really miss. And I think that's just, it, this has been an opportunity to realize how important others are in our lives. You know, Jasmine answered earlier that she sensed the community more fully once she was away from it while in it. Uh, one of the conversations that um, is going on in higher education is what does this all this mean for the residential model? And I'm quite strongly of the view that the fact that we were apart is going to underscore for most people how important it is to be together and how much richer the educational process is by virtue of that. Jason, what about you? Have the last several months in the in, in your life and in the world changed the way you're looking at your future or what you hope for it? Yeah, it certainly has, but probably in a different way. And that like, so I didn't get to study abroad at Gettysburg College. I mean, I didn't, not that I didn't get to, but I just wasn't able to, I didn't have enough time. Um, and so that was one of my bigger regrets. And I highly recommend that, that everyone does that. So my plan this summer was before I would start working was to travel a lot, um, go go and go to Europe and just travel and experience new cultures and places. Um, and so I really can't obviously do that. So I have to put that on the on the back burner. So in that respect, you know, my outlook has changed. I have to put that uh, uh, goal aside. But um, in, in other terms, in terms of my career and stuff that I'm interested in professionally, um, it, I don't, I wouldn't say it has changed, but I think I'll have to, you know, expand my, my search, my job search, and I'll have to expand, you know, certain things to be open to applying to different types of jobs and everything like that, because, uh, you know, I, I think that I was able to gain, a, you know, a wide, wide range of skills and develop a lot of different, uh, things at Gettysburg. And so I, I just, I feel, I feel like I reflecting on my past four years here, I have to be a little more open and just open to new new types of experiences moving forward. Are you, um, you said a moment ago that sports management is the business of sports is of what's interest to you. If that's the case, this is not the optimal time to get into the business of sports. Yeah. No sports occurring in the, but is that what you're hoping to do? Um, yeah, so that's, that's, that's definitely something that I'm interested in um, after taking, you know, an individualized research study with a, my history professor this semester. Um, and yeah, I'll be looking into that. However, I've also really been interested in real estate um, in New York City. I grew up in New York City, of course, and that's a great real estate market to be around. And 
I just I just feel kind of attached to it because uh, I've had several internship experiences in it, and I I'm interested in general property development and stuff like that, and creating communities through yeah. property development. So that, that's something else that I'm interested in. You know. Uh, so Jasmine, what what about you? How do you? Um, it sounds like law school is in your imminent future. Congratulations. Um, was that so a year ago? How have you? How has this year influenced you? Uh, yes. So law school's been on my mind for two years. So <laughs> the COVID had nothing to do <laughs> with my with me making the decision. Um, however, um, similar to Darby, um, this situation has reaffirmed my passion. So I'm really passionate about immigration and criminal justice. And um, so um, in terms of criminal justice, I mean immigration. Sorry. Um, um, I'm not sure if you're all aware, but um, at least in New York, there have been some or there's been talk about releasing and they have been they have released um, some prisoners, you know, due to COVID-19 because, you know, they're not safe. They're in these overcrowded, um, you know, cells and whatnot. And so just hearing about that in particular, just again, reinforces like why I'm interested in immigration and just the aspect of just, you know, people just as people we have you know these individual human rights but also you know rights that even you know regardless of status there's still you know civil civil rights right like you know and so that really reaffirmed that passion and then in terms of criminal justice there's also been a lot of police brutality like in new york um there's been so many cases of just like uh police brutality and it, it doesn't and like well this is regardless of race um and ethnicity and so you know, that also reaffirms my passion for criminal justice. So if anything, I'm kind of in a bind because I'm not really sure. And I know that I still have time, but I'm not sure if I, you know, want to focus on immigration or criminal justice, but I just been really riled up and like been really caught up in all the news and, you know, in just like the social activism or activist part while being home, right? right? So that's just kind of like where I've been at. Um, let me just underscore the point you you yourself made. You have time. Uh, as someone, law school is three. As someone who went through law school, law school is three years. You will, um, as as you change during the course of college, you will also find that law school influences the way you see the world, and you will that that question may become clearer to you by virtue of the passage of time. Um, let me end with we've admitted the class of 2024. Um, they will be walking the steps that you all have walked for the last four years um, in the fall. What advice would you have for them? Um, Darby, we'll, we'll start with you. What advice would you have for the class of 2024? Um, I would say take advantage as of as many opportunities as you can, not just academically, but also personally and socially. Um, I think all three of us can say we know how quickly things can change. Um, so really take advantage of, you know, going to the Apple Harvest Festival or going to participate in different Gettysburg traditions. I know that that's one thing I'll definitely miss is I learned so much in the classroom, but I also grew so much as a person just by getting to know different people and partic um, participating in different activities. So have fun, make the most of it and learn as much as you can, but don't forget that um, you have the rest of your life to continue learning and working, but take advantage of the fun times also. That's something I wish I had done more actually, so. Excellent, Jasmine. Yes, so I would suggest, or I would um, advise the class of 2024 to build mentorships. So um, <laughs> for me at Gettysburg, I didn't have too many friends, which I was completely fine with. Like I had my, my a really small circle, but I had so many mentors. And so I would suggest like, okay, build a mentorship and inside the classroom to never be afraid to, you know, participate, whether that is by asking questions or whether that is by, you know, just maybe making a comment. Like if someone said something that, you know, they, they value, they agree with just, you know, commenting because that helps, uh, you know, us as peers, um, or, and also speaking, you know, your truth or, or, you know, speaking up and never being afraid to, to, to say what's on your mind, right? So basically never minimizing your experience. And um, in terms of outside the classroom, I would say, or rather I would emphasize to please step out of your comfort zone. Like I've met a lot of people at Gettysburg where they would be interested, like they'll have an interest in something uh, in whatever topic it may be. And they'll tell me things like, oh, like, yeah, like I'm interested in this, but I just never pursued it. Like I never, 
I was never part of this club or I was never part of that. And then I would ask them, how come? And they would be like, oh, well, you know, I just, it was, uh, you know, I would be uncomfortable. I wouldn't feel comfortable being in that space. And so I would urge that, you know, to not, the thing is that in order for, like, I just think that it's important for us to be uncomfortable because I think that's part of the learning process. So I would urge, you know, students to be uncomfortable. And once they are in spaces that they do feel uncomfortable, I think it's crucial that they're active listeners and that they just be mindful of that space, because that's also part of why people would think they're uncomfortable or feel uncomfortable, because again, it's an environment that they're not used to. But if you're listening and you're being mindful and respectful, then I think it could go a long way. Excellent. I, a good education needs to make you a little bit uncomfortable because a good education asks you to question your foundational assumptions about how the world work. It doesn't ask you to change those assumptions necessarily, but it asks you to question them. And whenever we question our fundamental assumptions, you get a little bit uncomfortable. Jason, you have the final word on this. So what advice do you have for our soon to be first years? Uh, yeah, I, th I think my, my answer is kind of twofold. Uh, and building off what we're, we're all talking about, you know, getting out of, outside of your comfort zone, that's extremely important, I believe. Um, I would say don't be 100% locked in coming into college with a major or w with a minor, things that you, you're definitely going to do. Because one of the strengths of Gettysburg is that, as I, as I previously mentioned, is that you're exposed to a wide range of academic discipline. And, and I think, you know, through, through taking a diverse range of classes, you'll find what you what you like and what you don't like. And that's very important. Um, you should choose your major what, on what you're most passionate about, not necessarily on what you think is best for a career path. Because as, as you'll learn after four years, you can apply a lot of the things and skills that you learn in, in college to, you know, so many different types of careers. And the second part of my advice is to, uh, as Jasmine was saying, is to, you know, find a mentor built and definitely like work towards building oh, close working relationships with your professors and the people around you. I think another one of the major strengths of Gettysburg is how you're able to become very close and collaborate with your professors. And I didn't discover that really until later on. Um, and my, my last year at college, uh, that's definitely one of the strengths and the professors are, at Gettysburg are amazing in terms of, of how much time they give back to their students and how they're so much willing to help us in achieving our goals. So I, I yeah, I would say don't be hundred percent locked in with your major, explore a wide range of things and find what you're most passionate about. And secondly, you know, try to try your best to work with your professors and develop close relationships because they'll help you grow and, and learn more than you thought you could learn. Well, all three of you have given phenomenal advice to the class of 2024, and you leave me hardened about the future because you guys will be graduating into a world that, you know, I'm fond of saying needs people like you. Uh, you know, the challenges in the world, whether it is in um, understanding information, Darby, whether it's in immigration and criminal justice reform, Jasmine, whether it's in sports management or building space that people can live in and engage in constructively, those are important questions. They need people with a wide ranging capacity to think, uh, to care about inclusivity, to care about the things that you guys have articulated. So um, I am hardened by this conversation. I am optimistic of the future in your three hands. And let me end by thanking you all for joining us today. Um, I will see you virtually on Sunday and I hope to see you physically uh, in October. And again, congratulations on a wonderful full year career at Gettysburg. Thank you so much for having us. So yeah, thank you. I normally end these podcasts with a story about something that's happening on campus or an accomplishment by an alumnus or other members of the Gettysburg community. Today, I wanna to end with a simple congratulations to the class of 2020. You have made this campus a better place for your presence, for your commitment, for your engagement on issues that matter. You've experienced a senior year unlike that of any in modern times, but through it all retained your good humor, a belief in this place, and a deep sense of gratitude. I speak on behalf of the entire Gettysburg College community when I say that we cannot wait to celebrate you and your accomplishments. We'll do it in person on October 9th and 10th alongside your friends and families, 
But we also think it's important to mark your original commencement weekend, May 16th and 17th, and we are looking forward to a virtual senior celebration comprising a series of virtual events to laud the graduating class. This is a place whose history teaches us the importance of resiliency and commitment. The class of 2020 stands proudly in the tradition of this college, and we are equally proud to call you our friends and now our alumni. Thanks for listening. If you've enjoyed this conversation and want to be notified of future episodes, please subscribe to Conversations Beneath the Cupola by visiting gettysburg.edu or wherever you get your podcasts. If you have a topic or suggestion for a future podcast, please email news at gettysburg.edu. Thank you, and until next time.